This is Dominique Wilkins. Hey, this is Sean Kemp. This is Gary Payton. Hey, this is Paul Gasol. NBA fans, what's up? This is Vince Carter here. Hey, what's up? This is Matt Barnes. If you're an old school NBA fan like I am, make sure you check out the basketball time machine with my man Sean David. Hey folks, how's it going? Welcome back to the Basketball Time Machine. I'm your host, Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. You know what time it is? It is old school NBA time. So on today's episode, I'm going to take a look at NBA legends giving their opinion on how good Patrick Ewing was. One of my favorite bakes of all time, so it's very interesting to see what the greatest of the greats have to say. So sit back, buckle up, and let's get right into it. Now the first clip that I'm going to take a look at is from NBA Open Court and it's very interesting because they are comparing Hakeem Olajuwon and Patrick Ewing. In your generation, a couple of big men, Patrick Ewing and Hakeem Olajuwon, uh, the hand-to-hand -hand combat that goes in there in your first hand there, what's it like Shaq? Patrick was, Patrick was mean, Patrick was mean and you know all the Georgetown guys were mean and you know coming up I you know tried to pattern my game after Patrick. And, you know, Patrick was a great player, but uh, if you ask me the better of the two, I'm going to have to go with Akeem Olajuwon. Patrick is a great warrior, great competitor, and he was probably, he probably played with the least amount of talent than any great Hall of Famer probably that you could mention in terms of, I don't think he ever played with another Hall of Famer. So he's the guy that maybe didn't have that talent around him maybe, that, but he's not Akeem. Well, first of all, I think Patrick Ewing is probably the most underrated of all the great centers because he didn't win the championship. Uh, but I will say this about him. He, that guy, he's a man. Yeah, he's, and he's a teddy bear. But I'm going to go with Olajuwon. I agree with everyone here on the panel. I would go with Hakeem Olajuwon out of the two. But the guy that kept me up most nights because <laughs> he was in our conference was Patrick Ewing. And not only because he was well coached under the Riley years, but you knew what you were getting defensively when the Knicks drafted Patrick. We, we knew he was going to protect the basket. But I think all of us would be a little bit shocked that he has over 25,000 points because he wasn't a scorer while he was at Georgetown. And the way he evolved offensively, yeah, he's not in the category of a Shaq or a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar or Hakeem Olajuwon, but you talk about one of the meanest guys to protect <laughs> the paint. Patrick Ewing was that guy. And you had so many memorable nights against that team. You talked about being in the same conference, but the Pacers and the Knicks, and it was you, and it was Starks, and it was Spike, and it was Patrick Ewing. And uh, I, I imagine those matchups even ratchet up that, that meanness and that intensity even more. But not only that, I, I don't think a lot of New Yorkers give Patrick yeah. Ewing the credit yeah. that he deserves. A, a lot of times he was the, the scapegoat, and it's unfair to him because this was one guy that brought 110% each and every night he took the floor. And yeah, he didn't win a championship, but it wasn't because of it was a lack of effort. And I, you know, when you hear New Yorkers talk about Patrick and sometimes uh, the, the misfortune and, and not winning the championship, I scratch my head because there's a lot of us on this panel because of the great Michael Jordan didn't win a lot of championships and he just falls into that category. Not too long ago, Charles Oakley, who played for many years with Patrick Ewing, came out and said that Patrick was the reason why the Knicks didn't win a championship. Check it out. Well, you said that when you were playing for the Knicks that you felt that Patrick Ewing uh, held the team back. Yeah. Can you explain that? Uh, yes, because I think that, uh, you know, it's just like you get to your wing guys, you know, you get to Jordan, the Kobe, LeBron, and them type of guys that who can just, you know, just do so much. And then when you get, um, I think that we had Patrick, he only could like defense or rebound. We had to wait for him to get in the post. We had to make, we had to always wait. It was like, wait, 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 wait for the light changes. And then sometimes we wait too too long because like I said, back in the older days, you only had so many seconds to get a good shot. And then you didn't, if you didn't get it, you're not getting two good shots in one second and won 24 seconds back in the day. It was tough. So your first good shot, you got to get it. Sometimes we had to wait too long. And then team, when they zone in on defense and the shot clock running low, you can't make with so many passes. I mean, it's just, I mean, he was good at what he could do, but 
I think it was, just, it was the point it was for us to get over the hump. He wasn't the guy. Those are some pretty harsh words by his former teammate Charles Oakley, but I have to say I respectfully disagree. There are many teams like the Houston Rockets with Akeem Olajuwon, or the teams that Shaq was on that played a similar way and also were very successful, so I don't think that he was the reason why the Knicks weren't successful in the long run. We are going to wish a f happy 58th birthday to Patrick Ewing, and so I want you to spend 58 yes. seconds telling us what it was yes. like to play against him. P.E. crazy, crazy P.E. A traditional center, young people, seven foot tall, can play face in the basket, can turn over both shoulders, can protect the rim, double figure rebounder, was a terrific star at Georgetown in college, was the face of the franchise of the New York Knicks for so very long. There are people walking the streets of New York City right now that have never seen the Knicks since Patrick Ewing played for them because really that was the last time they were good. That just shows you how dominant he was in their uniform. A very happy 58th birthday to the great Patrick Ewing. But, but Jalen, I'm thinking back to a time, oh, let's go back to 1999. What happened here? Oh, Tell no. me what happened here. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 oh, Jake hold you back. Jake Book better hold you back. Where you at, Dale? Thank you, Dale. I give you the final word, Steve Kerr, on this when you put these two guys together and what they both brought to the table. Well, as a guard, you have to learn defensively to, to help down and rotate. And I thought it was a lot easier to help down on Patrick. He was a little bit more mechanical offensively, so you could help and the team could kind of figure out the rotations. With Hakeem, it was impossible. You all right? No. What's it, you getting, look like you're getting emotional. Yeah. I just, saw, I just saw Patrick Ewan, man. That's a real tear, too. Yeah, that was Patrick Ewing. Can we get a close-up on the Yeah, tear? can we zoom into that? That's real tears, ladies and gentlemen. That's not trickery. Are you, are you saying not like the real you abs? tissue. Like the no, real abs? No, no, you know what? A lot of people, you know, a lot of people when they talk about the greats, there Patrick Ewing name never comes up, but I'm putting Patrick Ewing names there in there as one of the greats. You know, he was a great competitor, even though he never even though the Even at the time when you scream, this is my house, get oh, out. Of course. <laughs> hey, listen, <laughs> I listen. That. I watch a lot of karate movies, and in every karate movie, the student always had to kill the teacher to become the best. So, you know, even, even though Pat was better than me, I had to, to say that to psych myself out. But Pat was a great player, great competitor, did a lot, and, you know, I'm putting him as one of the top five centers. Who's number Pat? one then, guys? Who's number one guy? If you had to take one, eliminate everybody. So he's the number up. one guy. Ewing. David got one. Every center got one but Pat. Ewing, Ewing over Charles. Charles is two. Pat, no, then yeah, I would go you, uh, Ewing had better teams. Yeah, yeah. Ewing's team swept Charles' teams when he was in Philly. Yeah. The, the early Ewing teams would beat. Kenny, would you go Chuck Charles or Neek? You said Chuck two, Neek. And then Neek three, three for me. I felt like I could touch the roof and I just sort of felt Patrick falling and he tried to gray out me and I didn't do anything. I mean, it, it looks worse than what it is, but uh, I just tried to release his arm so his momentum would just let him fall back so he wouldn't pull me down and my momentum was still coming towards him and I ended up sort of just walking all on top of him and uh, I said something that I wouldn't want to repeat here. <laughs> But uh, if you can get a professional lip reader, maybe she can uh, figure it out. When he got the New York, he, he was like the modern day Willis Reed, man. He was a monster. Misses and Ewing says hello to the NBA. I mean, the knee pads were nasty. I mean, he wore volleyball knee pads. That's really nasty. But he was the man. Patrick Ewing, to me, is definitely one of the most underrated bigs of all time. It was impossible for him to win a championship, since his team was simply not good enough. Also, he played in the golden age of bigs. I mean, Shaquille O'Neal, Hakeem Olajuwon, David Robinson, etc. Plus, we have to remember that there are so many players of that era who didn't win a championship because of that one guy named Michael Jordan. So, Pat, love you, man. You were amazing. All right, you guys, that was it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do me a favor, please leave a like and also subscribe to the channel. So you guys all be healthy, take care, and see you next time on the Basketball Time Machine. 5.9 seconds, right? It's a ton of time. A lot of time. You can get a couple of dribbles off and you need it. Now watch this reverse move. He comes back, 
jump stop, and he shoots that jumper. And I'm happy for Patrick for one reason, because he's really labored with his injuries.